Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so keep saying what y'all were saying. I, uh, I, if people think like the language is odd, I just don't know what we would re, I don't know what we would change it to, you know? Because well, I, let, me, let me bring up, really interrupt you one second and just yeah, bring up Max you brought up in, in full Senate. Um, I'm not going to push either side. We're trying to like, uh, the points that were brought up so that we take those into consideration when we're talking about this. Mm -hmm. One of the things that they were talking about was they like wanted to know the specific differences between suspension of duty and suspension of voting and debate. Um, and like in which cases each one was different. So I think it might be useful to like write down a list of those differences and then work through each specific district difference to see like, okay, like what do we need to remedy this? Like, is this a good difference or bad difference? You know, like, is it, is it relevant? Um, mm -hmm. One of the first ones, was um, I brought up a point that suspension of duty would imply that they are no longer obligated to attend meetings, which would hopefully like not incentivize them to show up if they were being a disturbance. Mm -hmm. um, because suspension of voting and debate, voting and debate only really happens. So it's 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 not clear and see if voting and debate only applies to full senate meetings or committee meetings. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe that might be something that's worth uh, specifying. Um, because if it does only apply for full Senate meetings, then the editor in question could still theoretically come to committee meetings and be a disturbance potentially, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but with suspension of duty, if they're not obligated to attend either meeting, then hopefully that would be like a disincentive for them to come, you know? And if they still do come, then the Sergeant at Arms is the one responsible for taking them out. I think the second point is how many speaking opportunities do senators really have outside of voting and debate? Mm -hmm. um, because Baxter, as Baxter mentioned in the meeting, voting and debate pretty much covers like most of the talking that would happen in a meeting from like a non-officer. Um, and even if they did want to speak, it's up to the chair to recognize them and like give them the floor to speak. Mm -hmm. And so like it would be upon the, the chair to either give them that privilege or take away that privilege. Um, and if they continue to act out of order, then it would be on the sergeant of arms to remove them from the meeting. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. um, so I think that's something that we might need to consider as well specifically. But then a good point that Colin brought up, and I think I think it was Colin, maybe like I think it was also Jay. Mm -hmm. um, I forget who else, but they were talking about how just having that physical presence of the person in the meeting could be a disturbance for some senators who like feel uncomfortable with that person, you know? Um, which hopefully would be like where that that attendance part comes in where if we if we say like if your duty is suspended, then you you are no longer obligated to come for attendance purposes, then hopefully the senators will be like, oh, like, I won't come anymore. And even though they can come as like a member of the public, if they do create a disturbance, it can be, like, we, we can't prevent that. You know, like, it would have to be like, um, the sergeant of arms would have to remove them if they were a disturbance again. Mm -hmm. um, so I think those were the, the relevant points and differences that were brought up in the full Senate meeting um, that I can remember right now. So I think it's important that like, we consider those and, and say, like, okay, like, or C and D really in terms of um, removing someone from a meeting or allowing them to speak. You know, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, that's what I wanted to say. Okay. So that is a good point. I think if we break it down um, part by part, let's just assume like for this circumstance that we keep C just to see how different they truly are. So at least in C, it doesn't touch on attendance, which is something that people were, said we're opening to changing. Um, just suspension of voting and debate privileges for a definite period of time. Whereas in D, as it reads now, um, it says that you would let, lose the permission to attend meetings um, of the undergraduate senate and its committee. So we could we could change that to obligation. Um, we could leave it as permission to attend meetings, which I kind of like. Like if you aren't going to come, it's not going to be in an official capacity. We can even add that. Um, debate privileges and the permission to attend meetings um, in an official capacity, if you guys think that that would be interesting to have. But then there's also the option of adding in to see like, hey, this applies to full Senate, but not committee meetings. And that could be another difference between the two. Like that's an extra step of, hey, like you don't actually have to come to full Senate meetings, but under D you still have to, you don't have to come to committees either. Like anything like that. I'm interested in starting with attendance as like the first difference and hearing what you guys think. Do you think it would be easier to sort of like set a difference in between the two with C and D or just are you still in favor of just striking C?
Mm-hmm. I think we should set a difference between C and D because I think we can make a bigger difference between them. Mm-hmm. I just like the, having the different levels. So mm-hmm. I feel like striking C would just kind of give us less flexibility if anything were to happen. That's true because the option before that is only suspension of voting privileges. So if someone really did pose an issue, they could still come and debate and do whatever they wanted to. And I feel like the jump between like you can't vote and you can't come at all is honestly a very large one. So in C then, for anyone, it says exactly suspension of voting and debate privileges of any senator for a definite period of time shall require two thirds uh, vote following debate on any motion of the ethics committee. So what would you want to change there? Suspension of, um, we could say like, senators with these, something along the lines of like senators um, with these privileges suspended are relieved of their obligation to attend full Senate meetings for attendance purposes or something like that. I would be interested in hearing what you guys think for wording or even is that what we wanna do? Do we just wanna stipulate for full Senate meetings? Or what do you guys think? I mean, I would say full Senate meetings would be, that would be a way to di- you know, distinguish between the two of them, but. Yeah, I also think like, as far as it says, um, voting and debate, the way that committees, at least for ONA, since I've been on it, have been structured, it's always been more of an informal discussion. So I don't even, yeah. like, Keisha, if as as this is written, could it could like Will have turned to someone in an ONA meeting and be like, oh, we're talking about something right now, like you lost your debate privileges, or is it too informal to even apply that to committees? Yes, I think committees are informal just because we treat them more informally, mm-hmm. like as as people, which is fine, um, because it's like a pretty small group of people. But I think technically speaking, in committees, like we still do have motions and mm-hmm. to enter debate, it's still technically like a motion that like is entertainable in a committee. Okay. Um, so the way that I would interpret it would be that <clears throat> they can't vote in full Senate or in a committee, um, or or like or debate in full Senate or a committee. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, I think I think that's the way I would interpret it. There's there's, there's no like codified thing in the standing rules or in the student code that says committees follow. Actually, before I, before I speak. Okay. Do you think, do you guys think it would be a stark enough difference to say like in C, like senators um, or, or persons with these privileges suspended are relieved of their obligation to attend meetings of the undergraduate Senate and then D, like the permission to attend? Is that large enough of a difference you think? Or do you think people are still going to be like, well, now if they both can't go to meetings, like it's even more similar. It's just hard for that, me. Yeah. Keep going. I'll yeah. I think they might think it's more similar. Yeah, I agree. It's just hard for me to put myself in the exact frame of mind, as I, I don't think they're super similar, but I, I actually understand where people are coming from. It's just hard to, hmm, okay. Okay, for right now, I think we should put in something about the attendance. We can say, persons, Persons who receive a suspension of their voting and debate privileges are relieved of their obligation Something that I guess we could add into the D, um, suspension, we could say the permission to attend meetings of the undergraduate Senate and its committees like in an official capacity. Is that a worthwhile distinguisher? Because you can't stop them as being a member of the public, but I feel like that is like a little bit of a specification. That makes sense. Let me pull yeah. 
Okay. Okay. Are you editing this on the, on the Google Doc in the folder? Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's see. So, um, another thing I feel like we can add, it's a little bit less applicable um, this semester without everything being on Zoom. You know, there's not like really a ton of events for senators to attend, but we could add maybe in a sentence about like, not being able to represent the undergraduate senate um, at different in, at different events on campus and things like that in official capacity as well during the suspension of duty um, i think that would be good yeah yeah is this for c or for d i'm thinking d i agree okay i'm just trying to, the hardest part is the wording and my google doc has been doing a really weird thing lately with where my cursor goes Okay, suspension of official duties. Persons. Duties. Okay, we'll say persons who have been suspended shall not represent the undergraduate senate in any official capacity throughout the time of the period of their suspension We could Can I? Oh yeah, oh, totally. Go ahead. I just wanted to ask a question about the sentence added to C real quick, because I kind of feel yes. like where where it says um, are relieved of their obligation to attend meetings. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between that and then indeed the permission to attend meetings of the undergraduate senate and its committees? Um, at least for D, I just added in in an official capacity. Um, to sort of set the two off where I know people were complaining and see that they weren't really sure, like in the way that I have to keep track of people's attendance um, to avoid another ethics issue, they weren't really sure like when you were on suspension, if you had to attend. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to clarify that for them. If you think it's too similar, that can be something that we can definitely be where we were. Uh, that's why in D I said in official capacity. And I think obligation versus permission can be an important thing as well. Like, if you want to come in D, like, it's not going to be as a senator. Um, a little bit too similar. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we should, I don't, I personally think that we should leave, it like, the question of not requiring attendance for D, and then in C, like, still have them be able to attend. Just because, like, I think that's, like, part of what sets them apart, you know? Okay. Let's Let strike that. If you want, we could add um, to see, we could add for both Senate and committee um, for like the suspension of voting and debate. Could just like clarify that? Mm, yeah. So then should we also clarify that we do want senators to attend while they're on suspension of voting and debate privileges? Sorry, could you repeat that? So like, sorry, I may have misunderstood what you were saying, but um, so we're saying that for part C, we still want um, a, a senator who's suspended voting and debate privileges to still attend the meetings, right? Is that right? Okay, so, so should we like explicitly say that they should be attending the meetings? I don't think. I almost feel like if that was a standalone um, piece then we would need to but I feel like if it stipulates in D specifically that they shouldn't attend meetings that you can almost infer and see oh, okay but I don't know if anyone else agrees with yeah, that yeah I feel like it's implied uh, 
I have to admit, I'm not quite sure, like, once you're voting and debate for has been suspended, I guess you could still ask questions. Um, mm-hmm. Like, if we enter discussion? Right, but the one, yeah, once you enter discussion, you can't discuss it. Like, you could ask questions to the sponsor of a bill, because that's not in debate. But once you're in debate, you can't discuss the actual bill or like, debate the actual bill. Okay. Can't vote either. It also allows, like, if it was an officer, for example, who got suspended, mm-hmm. they would still like remain in their position, and like they would like still be able to like give their reports, um, but they just wouldn't be able to um, vote or debate, which I think is I think is still relevant. So I think it's fine to leave off the attendance and see. We could add something about. Mm, do we need to even add something about? I guess if you're suspending all official duties, it's assumed that like if you're an officer, you're not serving in that capacity. So I guess it's not necessary to interject that at all. But what do you guys think? Is there anything else that jumps out in your head as something you would want to take in and put in, take out? I feel like we've distinguished them enough. I felt like this last time though, and then I was being boozled yeah. at the meeting. Everyone really <laughs> came out of nowhere, but let's see. I just, I wish that this had been a better time for other people to come for because I really do want to accommodate everyone's ideas as best as possible, but I would not find an amendment friendly to strike D and just stick part A on to C. I don't know about other people, but I don't want to kill the bill. Um, for my own priorities of what we include. But at the same time, I just feel like that's such an important distinction. Anyone else have any other thoughts? I'm making a comment on the bill right now just to like list out visually the differences that came up in the full Senate, just so we can like consider them and yeah. make, sure, like, make sure that we consider them. Um, I'm also sending a message right now to Jenna like, to let people know that they can come if they want to discuss this bill. Are ready for the three-day weekend? I have an orientation for something on Monday ready. I'm like, I have, how is that allowed? But oh, really? It, yeah, it's Very called slavery. Rise. It's like um, tutoring kids in the Chapel Hill and Carver area. Mm-hmm. That's cool. We'll see. It's SAT tutoring. I haven't even thought about that in years, but okay. I'm just like staring at this, hoping that something will <laughs> jump out at me. Yeah, I, I can't think of anything that really pops into my mind. I mean, I feel like once we get into general meeting, like we'll find things that we yeah. don't think of. But that's the beauty of that when you have 30 miles working together, you get more ideas when you have six. Very true. So I came up with the green thing. Sorry, I'm not thinking about it. I'm gonna go ahead and comment this and then okay. add stuff to the bottom as I'm typing so that you guys can see as I type. Okay. So for anyone who's not looking at the document right now, it says even if we don't want them in a room, they can still attend as a member of the public. The most we can do is remove the requirement for them to attend in D so they don't come as often. Then if they do come as a member of the public in our disturbance sergeant at arms will remove them if the sergeant at arms is not capable of removing them there's not much else we can really do in the code yeah um remove the requirement at, at least that's how it's written right now is they don't even have permission to come unless it's as of the public so i feel like there's not much we can change about that one at least i also like wish everyone would read the bill for more of the frame of mind is like not every single reason that someone would be in trouble ethics wise is because they're presenting like a disturbance. I think it is valuable to say like there could be someone who really like misuses their office um, that them being at the meeting is not the only issue we need to address, you know, 
because I think a lot of the things we're talking about is like, well, what if they're a disruption or what if someone feels uncomfortable? But I think suspension of duty is useful as well, just not in the fact that they're not at the meeting, but in the fact that like we've set a standard for acceptable behavior. But at, at the same time, it's like something that you believe someone can come back from. Like you don't feel the need to remove them from the Senate, like, which I wish I had better articulated at the last meeting. And I guess like maybe I'll come prepared with a little presentation this time, get this bill passed, who knows, but. Let's see. So as of right, as of right now, let's see. Baxter brought up the suspension of voting and debate. This pretty much makes it impossible for a senator to speak unless they deliver an officer's report, ask a question regarding an officer's report, speak during the two minutes. And I also think it's worth um, considering that like an officer could be the one in trouble, which gives them like a much larger platform you know. Then again, it's still up. It's still on the speaker to grant people speaking privileges. Yeah, I know, but like, like I said, in the case that it's not someone who's causing like a concrete disruption at a meeting, like I feel like if you really did something that crappy, the fact that you're just like continuing on in your elected report, role. Right, right. Which I don't know how to convey that other than like saying it it's not something you write into a bill like we don't want to let people slide like so okay so reading this now mm -hmm. I mean, I guess we could add in like a sentence at the end as well. It's like officers of the undergraduate Senate shall forfeit this position for the period of time. But I feel like that's almost assumed that they're forfeiting all official duties or is it not? Am I just putting too much into it at once? I don't think it is. Um, because in G, hey Amber, uh, cousin G would have removal of an officer, which would mm -hmm. be like a removal, right? Like, um, and someone else had to be elected to that position. But indeed, unclear if if it is an officer then who takes over their duties so we could stipulate the like um in the case that an officer's duties have been suspended it could be like, like b under a um mm -hmm. we could say that in the case it is an officer either their vice chair or if it's a speaker in the perfect report would take over their duties um until they've served like their their suspension i think that's useful but is everyone and i think that's definitely different than c because in c like everyone's still in their official capacity as an officer or a senator but they just can't vote on the things that they're talking about or like actually debate the things they're talking about. Propose a bill, but you can't mm -hmm. vote on it, nor can you like be a part of the debate. You can ask questions, but you can't hang out. Um, and you can deliver reports. So I, I think that, I think we're on the right track in terms of like yeah. these two things, very distinct things. If you want, we can like, I can share my screen, you can share your screen if you want so that everyone can see it once. Oh yeah, totally. I just dropped the link for the legislation earlier for anyone who doesn't have it, but I will share my screen as well. Can everyone see? All good? Awesome. Okay. Should an officer of the undergraduate Senate be suspended? If anyone has any critiques of my wording, I'm really just putting out like what I'm thinking of. So if you have something more eloquent, like please do not be afraid to speak up and let me know. I mean, R&J will do that too. So. Awesome. Good job. Make sure they're seeing this bill three times in two weeks. Mm -hmm. I think, who else here is on R&J? Are, are Daniel and Jay on R&J as well? I'm on, I'm on RJ. Yeah, sorry. Oh, I am so sorry for you guys. I have to keep yeah. <laughs> dealing with this. This is this is like what? The, so I went through ethics and then went through ethics again. Too many. Yeah, so I went through ethics the first time, but then y'all didn't vote on it. So then I went through a second time and then went to full Senate, but then I got referred back to RJ. 
We're back to full sun again. <laughs> point we yeah, refer to back to ethics and back to RJ. And I'll go back to full sun. So we'll have we'll have heard this bill eight times at this point. Which I think this that's like gotta be like some sort of record. <laughs> I'm gonna hit up Guinness and see what they have to say about that. We got some nice publicity going. So if Keisha, say if you were suspended and then Maya had to fill your role, who would then fill in for Maya? Would it have to be like a whole shifting thing or how would that, or would she just serve both for that duration? She can't really, right? That's a good question. <laughs> uh, huh. Would we like elect an interim pro tempor speaker? So we'd either elect an interim speaker pro tempore, or we would bump up all the chairs and then elect. I don't know, but I feel like that's like displacing too many people out of like there. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think we just we would elect an interim speaker pro tempore. That's how I think it would work. So we probably specify that. Okay. Is that already stipulated or something like standing rules? No, I'm not in the code. Let me see. Go ahead and add it to the bill and let me let me look okay. at sorry, there. We love technicalities. <laughs> I know. Things you wouldn't even think you'd have to think of. All right. Has anyone here seen uh, seen West Wing? Like the first three episodes. <laughs> True. I just, you've got to watch the whole thing, dude. Like it, it's such a beautiful show. I'm so bad at watching shows. I'm like two seasons into House of Cards, and I just give up. See, for me, like I, I just need like the right show. Yeah. I'm really bad at watching them because like, like my friends like recommend me shows. I'm like I like can't watch. Them. I, like can't get up. But every time I'll come across like gold, you know, like Sherlock or West Wing or Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. Those were like the top three shows, like or Avatar, Avatar as well. Those I will binge. Okay. Right. What are we thinking? I'll just read over it. People are gonna see this bill and be like, "You guys added twenty million things," <laughs> <laughs> but it's so much more distinct now. I feel like this is point. Do we have to add in another bullet point, like in the case that the speaker pro tempore is suspended, there should just be an election? Or... I feel like that would be for another bill or something like that. I just feel like someone's going to question, I'm like, not... why did you stipulate what happens if the speaker gets suspended and not if the speaker pro tempore, you know? Right. So I think something we can also consider here is that um in cases of like emergency there's a clause in the code that gives the speaker the right to like exercise like emergency power whereas operational decisions as needed and so like if it was the case the speaker which in poor got like suspended the speaker has i would interpret the code to say that the speaker has the right to hold an interim election like of like a, like pass a resolution to say like we're like not holding an interim election for the speaker right now mm -hmm. i would i would imagine that that would be within the speaker's right okay yeah. Was. Um, I, I think you can leave off that technicality for now and we'll make a comment on the bill and so when R&J hears it next week um, we'll have me, Baxter, and Emma um, together so like we'll like have like a between three of us we'll have like a, like a more like a better understanding of like what like what is in the code and what isn't in the code okay. we can answer those questions better but this r and J's job to like worry about technicalities and worry about if rules have already been covered or not. Okay. 
What else are you guys thinking? I, even just in like the last couple of minutes, I'm happy with the way it's developed so far. I feel like we've really set these apart. Anything else that anyone would like to see? Also like in the case that you guys think of anything and in the meeting you're like, oh my God, like this is totally necessary. As long as the amendment makes sense, like I am down to find anything friendly. So if you think of something, hold on to that. Hold up, Drew, Drew. We don't, I don't think we even need um, BI because it's already in the code that in the case that the speaker can't chair a meeting, it's the person mm -hmm. can chair a meeting. Um, okay. So that we just like be being redundant. And then. Yeah, and it makes it a little bit more confusing. Yeah, and then we also, we, we wouldn't need to elect a new speaker pro tempore because like literally their job is to be like that fill-in person. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if like, for example, if I'm not there, then it's my job to like pick up the, the, the ball and mm -hmm. yeah, up until I can like, come back. Um, so, yeah, so I don't think we need to worry about that. So what do you guys think? Anything else? Our yeah, <laughs> back to I'm happy with the way this looks. I don't know if you guys have anything else to add. You can always vote to just approve it, send to R and J if you guys are good with that. You have anything, Amber? I'm sorry, I didn't see you pop in. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Oh yeah, sorry. I um I was in another meeting, but it ended early, so I figured I'd see if I could help out any. But it looks good to me. Awesome. Um. We can move to a vote then if everyone is good. Let me mark you as having come. Awesome. Okay, yeah. So again, just since some of y'all are on the phone, we'll do a voice vote rather than the coffee buttons and everything. So just a yay or a nay, where a yay is, I support this bill, good to send it to R&J. So, Amber. Yay. Awesome. Daniel. Yay. I have a vote yes. Jay. Yay. Lamar is not here. Nandy. Yay. And Nicholas. Yay. Awesome. So we have our consent. Awesome. Um, so notices and announcements is the next thing on our agenda. Everyone has taken the treasurer's test. Good job for that one. Um, yeah, I don't have anything really specific to share with you guys. If anyone get your fence apply for staff. Oh, that exactly. Please. Still I, have zero yeah, applications. So many people have said to me, like, oh, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. So push people, like, it's not a crazy time commitment and it's such a good way to get involved. Like, really, anyone who you think would be interested in student government, send it their way. Um, mm -hmm. but does anyone have anything to say? Anything you wanna chime in with? If not, then I wanna thank you guys all from coming for almost an hour on your Friday. I know that everyone's probably tired, but I'm going to officially adjourn this meeting. Thank you guys. I'll see you next time. Sorry, I've called so many recently, but thank you for coming. Bye. Yes, thank you. Bye. Bye.